I'm Shadon Larkey from Awards Daily. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, Shadon. Hi, for having us. Hello. Thank you. Um, so the first thing that really stood out, yeah, this is recording. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Um, the first thing that really stood out to me in my research was this concept of vintage futurism and sort of how that became your inspiration for the sound. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, this is Gareth's kind of concept. Um, you know, he, 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 his whole approach to this movie was he wanted to create a new type of reality, a, a, a vision of the future that combines the ancient with the futuristic, uh, where you could be in the jungles of Cambodia at Angkor Wat, the ancient temple, but have a monk who's a robot, you know, praying there and and combine sort of the best of these genres of, 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 of natural realism and science fiction, both of which I love. You know, I've worked on a few Terrence Malick movies, but also high concept science fiction movies. And he was creating sort of this beautiful, unique combination of those genres. And so retrofuturism uh, fits into this idea of uh, in the future, not everything is going to be the most high tech thing ever invented. There might be, you know, like we the Sony Walkman version of a robot, for example. And uh, and what does their voice sound sound like? Um, we experimented a lot with those kinds of robot voices as, as one part of retrofuturism. And uh, Gareth loves the sound of analog technology, like uh, what what. Uh, uh, Walter Murch did with THX 1138 or the Star Wars films did with certain vocal processing using vocoders and, you know, vintage technology. And so a lot of our experimenting was uh, playing with those old technologies, but in a new way. And, and then using that as sort of the start of the high tech spectrum, from the vintage retro type of sci-fi and then taking it all the way into what we now can do with sort of the most advanced style of sci-fi. So playing across that whole spectrum was one of the fun challenges of working on the creator. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I find so interesting about sound as a discipline is that it, sort of by design, you're not really supposed to notice it, right? It's supposed to feel natural to your ear. So tell me about, and this is sort of for all of you, but sort of pushing the boundaries of this discipline while also sort of keeping that in mind with the, within this sort of grounded vision of how do we immerse our viewers, but also make sure that this sounds sort of cool and, and visionary and impressive. I'd, I'd love to hear on Dean, your perspective from the mix side of things about uh, thank that. You. Well, that's the that's the beauty of what you what you touched upon. You you don't notice the sound, you, but you buy into the sound. And a that's because of Eric and Ethan, their their huge creative uh, talent. And then when it gets to the mix stage, it is our job to take all the sounds that they've given us and place it to those beautiful visuals. But you can't put too much into those visuals sonically because then you're just overwhelmed and it doesn't sound detailed. So um, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it is a balance, but A, the, the, the sounds have to be right to begin with. And for me, I'm just a viewer uh, being able to, uh, I experience the movie just like you do. And uh, whatever affects me emotionally is how I, play things and how I mix it but the, it all starts from from the beginning with the great sounds that the guys give us with Dean you know so a, a lot of my favorite scenes um you did something very special with our nature recordings you know we brought you all these recordings for that we did from Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam and Thailand and uh and talk about how you made those environments immersive. Cause I, I love the juxtaposition of that hyper real nature that, that puts the audience immersively right in that space with something totally constructed and, and synthetic. 
Well, well, a lot of it was just, uh, as you said, it's it's the the contrast between the the lab sounds uh, versus the electronic sounds, and then when we pop out in that nature, like when Alfie comes out of the hole, she's never been out there before, so we get to uh, to play that heightened reality. Uh, but the, again, the sounds were great, and then when he when the cornfield with the with the farmer. Um, I just get to play and place, use the Atmos uh, format to our to our advantage. And again, how it's affecting me, I'm 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 just jazzed to be in that environment, and I I'm, I'm hoping everybody else is feeling the same. What it's sound a- was maybe the hardest to crack? Where once you got it right, it sort of felt like that exciting, like kid in the candy store of like we got it type feeling. You know, I, um, I know exactly the sound that was the hardest to crack. Um, some sounds were totally easy, like Nomad you'd think would be the hardest thing ever. You know, it's the omnipresent danger of the film moving across the globe and sends down blue beams to target enemy AI bases, enemy, and, uh, and bomb them. And uh, Gareth described, well, it should sound dangerous. Those blue beams should sound like if you put your hand into the beam and held it there for too long, you'd get cancer. And Mm -hmm. I love that kind of direction because it's not telling you, make it sound like something we've heard before. He's describing uh, an emotion and something that's dangerous. Like what is the sound of cancer, right? That's for us as sound designers, sound artists is to interpret that and and create something visceral that works you know, in the, in the medulla oblongata part of the brain, something that is uh, visceral. Um, that, that we landed on pretty quick. The thing that took a lot of experimenting were, well, one example are the tanks from the big tank sequence, which uh, Gareth shot almost no green screen at all in this film. He was like on location in eight different countries and uh, he shot the floating village attack um, in Thailand, at real location, and uh, there's an invasion from the Western forces, and they've got these giant tanks. We didn't know when we started making the sounds for them what they would look like, so we're kind of flying blind, which in a way is very freeing creatively, uh, and th- then he shared some concept art, and we knew they needed to sound like tanks, but totally different also. So, you know, when you think of what does a tank sound like in your head, the trope is, okay, it's got sort of that tread rhythm, you know, go, 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 And so we played around with that for a long time. We made sounds that would have worked, but didn't, like, Ethan and our thermometer is always like, are we getting goosebumps? And we were not getting goosebumps yet. <laughs> and then we just had this sort of happy, you know, I, I love moments in what we do with, that are serendipitous, where they're these happy accidents. And uh, I was driving back from a skiing trip. We had a weekend off and uh, my car veered into the median a little bit. And it's like the serrated edge that, you know, it's for drivers who might be dozing off and it will wake, wake you up. And I veered into it and the entire car resonated with this huge hum, like the giant sound. And I was like, oh my God, it sounds synthetic, but it's a totally organic sound. And that's the sound of the tank. And so I pulled over and pulled out my recording rig. I bring it with me everywhere. Recorded the heck out of this median. I didn't care what was happening to my tires and brought that back to the studio, gave it that pattern, the trope of the sound of the tread. And that it's like a huge powerful sound it's it sounds like it could be synthetic but it is not it's a purely organic sound and that was the sound of the tanks and that entire um invasion sequence do any of you have any other moments that stood out to you i think there were so many moments but no i think i i have so many moments but I, i just had a thought as you were talking about the tank this is going to be one of those movies when other sound crews or mixing movies and the director is going to say, you know, remember that sound in the creator? I would like it to sound like that. Copy that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
you know, there's a, there's another technology sort of future retro future technology sound that was a little tricky, and I'm thinking of the jet copters um, because you know they're powered by jets, but this movie has a lot of sort of echoes of the Vietnam War era, and one of the things that one of the directions that Gareth gave us for these jet copters is he really wanted them to have this sort of um, the trope of the thwop, thwop, thwop of, of like a Huey helicopter that we hear in a movie like Apocalypse Now, you know, a Vietnam War era movie. So we 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 experimented a lot with trying to get the right fusion of that sort of um, signature thwopping rotor sound um, fused with a jet engine sound and our sound designer who we had working on that multi beeler um spent a lot of time you know struggling to make it feel grounded in the sort of future jet technology but also to to get that that pattern of the of the helicopter thwop which wasn't you know rational at all because there were no rotors involved there was nothing that you could see that would create that 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 sound, um, and oftentimes what we found ourselves doing with the sort of the idea of retro technology was take uh, take the pattern from the retro part of the technology. In this case, the pattern of the rotor thwops and fusing that with the actual sound of the future technology, which in this case is the sound of the jet engines. So we were able to take that jet engine th sound and sort of fuse this the the thwopping pattern into it and and just you know get the right the right mix of the elements so to make it believable but yes but yeah you know give us that sort of um that that feeling of like whoa we're in the middle of uh we're in the middle of this sort of thing that feels both from the future and from the past but you buy it and you don't even question that you don't see the rotors right um in our final minutes i know you guys are answering questions all day so i wanted to turn it back to you and just if there's something that maybe you haven't talked about or something you want to mention that stands out to you or is special you know i want to give you guys that space to let me know what's on your mind if i haven't right. asked you anything specific yet well, you know, in all, in a lot of these interviews, we're we're talking about all the great sounds and the, and the great robot sounds, but uh, we also have to talk about Hans Zimmer's score. He did a beautiful emotional score that connected us to Alfie and the story of Joshua and, and searching for his his love, and it's a it's a great score that uh, uh, kind of gets a little overshadowed by uh, the the fantastic sound effects that are in this movie so shout out I, to Hans he did a great job yeah uh, agree 100% the the score is so emotional and it builds in such a beautiful way you know it has such a, a this incredible emotional arc um that resolves in like literally the last frame of the movie in such a powerful emotional way you know with a close up on Alfie's face with tears streaming down her face and for me that's sort of the pinnacle moment of the movie and the score really brings us there in a beautiful way and i i would just add one other thing um uh as we wrap up is um gareth edwards approach to filmmaking is such a thrill to to work with him um he he's probably the most challenging director in terms of he wants something that, as we've mentioned, you've never heard before, but uh, that's just different also. And he's kind of unlike any other director in the sense that he combines genres. I feel like if Terrence Malick and James Cameron had a baby, it would be Gareth Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd never think of those two, thing, two filmmakers in one sentence, but it's, uh, it, it's so true. There's uh, something very different and unique and poetic. And he he does not want to do the same old thing that's been done in a million movies. He wants to do something really unique and really special. And uh, it's, it's a joy and an honor to have been on the ride with him.
What a note to end on. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.